morning, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Weekly Spark. For the month of February, I wanted to play a little bit with some of my tricks for working with found images. I've pulled a couple different things from magazines, some um, clothing catalogs, some fashion magazines, and these on their own don't have the kind of vibe, the kind of aesthetic that I want in my art journal. Love Jessica Alba, that's great, but this high fashion shoot with the focus on the clothing and the jewelry isn't what I tend to use as imagery in my art journals. So I've pulled these as some things to work with. Um, first, probably first two weekly sparks this month, I'm going to alter some images and then I'll make a page with those images. But to show you some things that I have done in the past so you can kind of see where we're going. This was a shampoo commercial. I believe that is Elle Fanning. Um, I think that's her name. And so she had flowing blonde hair in the commercial, but I was going for a mermaid vibe. So you can see there is a green tint over this. And not only have I painted into what was her hair, but I've painted to extend and to have so much more hair. Um, this was <laughs> similar in concept. This was a clothing ad and this model was wearing pants. And so I used some clear gesso. I've extended that and I've given her a, a brown skirt because I wanted this kind of limited palette in this wintry page. Sometimes it's as simple as just working right over top of the image. Um, this was stenciled in a really thick kind of gloss gel medium with a, a labyrinth stencil. And I lined it up so her eyes would be really clear, but tinted things so that you'd be able to see her face through the labyrinth. Sometimes it's more elaborate. Um, this was probably another shampoo commercial and I was um, going with some spring motifs and referencing a Welsh goddess named Blodiawith. So there are owls and flowers all intermixed through her hair. You can see some tendrils that are painted over. I even left her earring because everything was that kind of floral vibe and worked for that. Um, her hair probably was this long. It was probably a double spread in a magazine that it's collaged over top. Yep, she was wearing a pink bikini bottom. And again, it was probably an ad um, because it wasn't a high fashion shoot about the clothes, but she became a mermaid. I've got one more here. Yeah, I know this doesn't really fit all the way on the screen. Let's see, it just continues up into snake and fern up there. Um, yeah, that's actually Nicole Kidman. But I wanted, she was wearing something that was strapless. And so I could get, with the exception of her necklace and earrings and lipstick, something that was almost naked. And her hand position was perfect to kind of interweave this snake into things. So cutting, pasting, collaging, altering the images, and doing different kinds of modifications over top of them. The first thing to show you today is so incredibly simple. It's a way to distress the image. I've got two ways that I'll show you. Sorry, loud crinkle. The first one is simply with baby wipes. And I always keep them in the studio for cleanup. You can really see here how the baby wipe is lifting up ink and distressing the image. Now, it is sometimes, by the time you start to see results, you've almost gone too far, right? We're getting some bleed through from the other page since magazines are printed on such really fine, thin paper. But this changes the image, gives me that a distressed look that that can be interesting. And it also kind of opens up the 
paper a little bit, so it's going to be really porous. I'll save this and maybe do some things over top of this just to change it, just to make it not look like a shiny, glossy magazine image. I wanted to see what would happen if I could get these people to be less prominent so that I could use this landscape. They're not going to be erased. I can collage over them, but I wanted to see if I could blur them out a little bit. You see there, it's starting to, starting to go. And you go too far, you put a hole in the paper. Because like I said, it's very fine. They're a lot less noticeable now. And they'll be a lot easier to cover up, even with just a swirl of paint or a swoosh. So Baby Wipe can definitely alter things for you. I wanted to try it on her. This clothing catalog was a slightly heavier paper. And on this one, I can test some on this paper here on this purse, since I know that wasn't part of the image that I was really in love with. It is starting to, to fade back. Yeah, so not as much as coming off this one. Her face has started to change a little bit, but it's still pretty, still pretty intact. Another thing that is harsher, but can be done, is a little bit of sandpaper. I loved the position she was in. It would be great to juxtapose her in this fancy dress, like pressed up against some humongous flower, something that had a big scale change and it wasn't what you expected to see. So I thought this whole page was really interesting. For that reason, I might not um, mess with her right now, but this is just a wet dry sandpaper. It's a very fine grit, so it might be 400, something like that. It's actually so fine it's not doing much. I'm going to have to press a little harder. Well, you're starting to see a little... If I'd hold the paper still, you could probably see. They were getting some distress on the image. I could switch to a sharper, uh, higher grit sandpaper for sure. Let me grab another piece of sandpaper. All right, this piece is really coarse. So I'm going to use this um, bird image. It's coarse enough you're actually getting the patterns showing through. So you can go in circles, you can go in lines, you can cross hatch, and so that really changes the, the piece. Maybe distressed is not a look that works for you, but it is one way of definitely altering the images. I just want to see what happens if we put a little watercolor over top of this image that's sanded. Not sure it's going to do much, but I want to try it. We'll give that a sec. Watercolor is definitely beating up on the plain magazine paper, but we'll see if it absorbs into the sanded areas.
definitely being absorbed into that. Now I know this kind of muted teal is maybe not the color that you would have put on a face, but I wanted something with high contrast so that you could actually see it. So it's very complimentary to the warm tones in her skin. Just wanted to open up the possibilities of ways that you can change an image. Um, you know, that's kind of great. The glossy is dyed back. I like the texture. Maybe I don't even want to do anything to the bird itself, but I wanted to mess with the background some. And so that changes everything. I'd saved this bird because I loved the colors and I thought maybe I would cut it out. But now that I've distressed the background, I like it as is. I don't need this extra wing. And I like some marks like close to the body or on the body, just so the bird is not just outlined in that kind of floating black line. I like that better, right? So I haven't really obscured maybe a little bit on his eye, but now he's part of this kind of swirly environment. So I don't buy magazines very often. Uh, I do every once in a while if I want to have some new images to harvest, especially if there's a great um, cover article that catches my eye when I'm in the checkout. So it's definitely a splurge, but it is a source of reference images that, you know, I can keep working with for a long time, even after the first one or two that drew me to the magazine um, are done. So distressing the image, whether it be with baby wipes or sandpaper, definitely gives you some options when you're looking through images that you've sourced from other media. All right, stay tuned next week. I'm going to go talk about going into images and altering the image with paint and with clear gesso. So stay tuned for next week. As always, uh, like this channel, subscribe if it's your thing. That greatly helps out the channel. So um, I appreciate that and I look forward to more Weekly Sparks in our future. Bye for now.